Hello everybody, this is Red Scarf Fox coming at you with a another Transformers review. This one of an older figure, this being the Kingdom War for Cybertron Waspinator figure. And this is a figure I've been trying to get for a, some time when he initially released, and I was actually able to find one in store. They only had one, and then after that they had like two or three on shelves after that, but... It was certainly a figure that I tried to, like, hound down. Uh, because even though I haven't watched Beast Wars, I definitely remember Waspinator's character from Animated. So, certainly a character who stuck with me in some type of form. Waspinator! Yeah. Although I have seen snippets of the when he gets haunted by Starscream's ghost as well, so that's something. But starting off with our packaging here. See, we have the typical Kingdom packaging uh, of the figure and their alt mode on the front. This is when they had the clear plastic, which Hasbro is moving away from now, so. But protected figure, just, you know, better than an unprotected one, in my opinion. Some artwork on the side for Kingdom. Very nice, we have some of our main characters. And I guess some, oh uh, well... Might be Vinox right there. Eh, the sort of, <laughs> assortment of cast characters. On the back, some promotional shots of what the toy looks like. Uh, Waspinator on the side. Front, the top is, well, top, but you do have the Predacon logo here for the character. And underneath we have, uh, you know, warnings, symbols, barcode, all that jazz. So... All we have to do now is take him out and see what we are working with. And here we have him, our boy Waspinator, at fresh out of the box, next to all the stuff that came in the package with him. So first we're going to take a look at the aesthetic of this figure. And I would say he's really, I really like the green and like the mix of green and yellow. Overall I think for the paint they did like very good. Just before we move on to some of the finer details. See, we have our head here. Very nice sculpted head. I like the unique eyes that he has. Like the larger, more bug-like eyes with the purple color. And even how his head antennas have the same striped coloring to them. Torso is, well, the wasp head. So, ain't much to say there. But the similar with the eyes, the nice purple um, large bug eyes on the front are very cool, and they have a nice texture to them as well. Arms are very skinny, and I will say my only complaint with the arms is probably the insect arms. I kind of like... It's coming apart there, the torso. The only issue I really have with the arms is the, the large insect legs. Same with the regular legs, which I mean, I understand they had to separate them, but I feel like... Yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe without them, they would look good. Can you take these off? Nah, they're in there. I'm not going to risk pulling them out. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I don't think they really negatively affect him, like, that much. Overall, a nice mix of yellows and greens going on. The legs here, we have some of the black and yellow, which probably will go for his wasp mode. And very nice detailed legs. I like the pattern that these have. And the feet are also very cool. I like how these kind of protrude at the back here. And moving on to the back. We have these nice large purple wings. Which are really cool looking. And then we have the back of the hornet. Not hornet. The wasp. I messed up. His name is Waspinator. Waspinator. But... Yeah, let me put his wings back down. I think that's kind of weighing him down. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, I think the aesthetic of the figure is pretty cool. I mean, it definitely looks like Waspinator, how he's looked like in Beast Wars. So definitely very nice paint and sculpting the wings. I like a lot of the purple accents. Like, the purple really sticks out for him. So yeah, I mean, I think he's cool looking. Very cool looking figure. A nicely painted figure. Especially like with the, oh, like the tones of green and yellow. Like they could have just made it one tone of green if they really wanted to. But they decided to make it two different shades. Which is very nice to see. 
And with that, we're going to go into our accessories and see everything that this figure comes with. So moving on to accessories, similar to my last review of the Night Prowler figure, you really don't get ter much in terms of accessories. You have this piece, which is really... Don't focus on Waspinator. There we go. You have this piece here, which is supposed to be the back of the wasp, but also works as a gun for Waspinator. Let's just say focus a bit. But attaching that is easy. You got your peg right here. You got your arm right here. And you simply plug that in and boom, gun. Now he's got a wasp gun. He's, there we go. So, yeah, he's, so he does have one armed accessory that he can wield. Uh, this was a thing with the Kingdom line that they all came with these cards. And I think this is like the third Black Arachne I have. But everyone else is unique. I have Optimus, Megatron, and Dinobot. And then I have three, like, Black arachnias for some reason, so you know, but you know, it's a card, simple back. It's not like you know, it has like it goes with this figure or it has like stats on it. So, if collecting Transformers cards like this is your thing, well, you know, it's there for you, but other than that, it's not really doing anything for the figure itself. So, I'm gonna leave it to the side for the rest of the review. And you have your instruction manual, which might not technically be an accessory, but you know, instructions on instructions. <laughs> So, yeah, accessory count is kind of minimal, but I think this that was kind of be expected. I mean, this figure does already have a lot on his own, so, yeah, but I mean, you know, I mean, I do wish this had, like, a fold-out barrel for the gun, at least, the, the, the gun. I mean, it's really just the back of the wasp, but I do wish I had, like, a fold-out barrel or something, because like you see, like, there's a mold, like, for a barrel. I wish it kind of extended or something, so it kind of looked more like a gun. Instead of just a, a, a butt of a wasp. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's essentially what he has. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty average accessories. I mean, you know, and you actually got to make sure you don't lose that, because that is going to be crucial for the wasp mode, so... Yeah, definitely want to make sure you don't lose that one as well. But next, we're going to take a quick look at our articulation for this figure. Now that we have everything to the side, we can take a look at Waspinator's articulation. So, starting off with our head. Focus camera. There we go. Very standard head. Can move around a complete... 360, not hopefully not taking the torso with it. So yeah, you got can move like up, down, not very much, some side to side if you know, you want to give him like a little head tilt. Uh, the torso has a waist swivel that can go all the way, but you will have to like move the wings or the legs out of the way if you want to do that. And I guess while I'm here. On the back, wings are on ball joints, so you can move them out and about. On his torso here, these antennas can move. Keep his head in place. Arms, again, you have to move. I'm going to try to keep his back wings closed in as to not affect articulation. These can go around full 360 can move out that far. Arms will not be able to do a 360 around because of these arms here. These arms do rotate. So that might give you some options for movement. And the hand can rotate a full 360. And yeah, obviously that's the same for the other um, arm as well. Legs can kick up very far. It's very nice. Kick back this way. You can kind of get his leg out to kick back a bit further. And I just raise his whole torso up. 
His legs can spread about this far with the legs colliding. They can probably spread about more, really. Um, these can somewhat move, but they don't move that far. The leg can move up like that, which is probably more of a transformation part. Can move back like that. You know, if I can get a 90 degree. You can't really move these legs as much. You got your ankle pivot here. Feet can move slightly up and down. And then these pieces on the back can somewhat move in. I don't think there's any movement, not really any movement in the back here. Snap them back into place. But yeah, pretty... I mean, I would say it's near standard articulation, but the large arms that he has on him do kind of prevent some of his movements. So it's definitely something to consider. If you do want something super poseable, the legs might get in the way. So this might not be entirely the figure for you if posability is a thing you value. And I might cover some more of my, that on my final thoughts. But now we're going to move on to the next step, which is the transformation. Alright, so now we're going to try to transform this figure based off what the instructions have for us to do. So, for the first step, you want to close in the body, which I think is going to slightly raise him and disconnect him from the body, the main body. You want to detach this and move this forward, like so. Next, you want to move the head up, which I guess like is going to conceal the head, and that's going to plug in there. So we already got a good part of the wasp itself coming together. <laughs> Let's see, these are moved up. So it's like next, you want to move the arms in. Do move your arms in like so, and then we want to rotate them though, so that the bug legs are sticking out. Make sure I, yep. We want to rotate the hand pieces in like so. So, so far. Kind of getting that wasp form, but not completely yet. So it looks like now we want to bend the arm. This one step looks interesting. So there's these pegs here. These tiny pegs here, not these larger ones. And we want to plug them into the holes right here by bending the arm. There we go. Try to Almost. I might have to do something with this arm as well. Uh, let's see if I can get it. I want it. Oh, there we go. That might be why the body is slightly rotating. It's very hard to get on camera. Just what how? Oh, there we go. Okay, I got that one in. It's hard to get with how small it looks on camera. You want to get the other one in almost got him. This other arm's being difficult. I don't think that's an issue with the figure though. I think it might just be the way I'm trying to handle it. Yeah, I may have to do this one off camera real quick. Alright, after some adjusting, I was able to get it in. That other one, I don't know if the arm just wasn't out all the way. But the important part is, it's in so we can proceed. 
So it looks like next we want to disconnect the waist from the body. So now he's going to become very, <laughs> very tall. And I, just, I want to kind of get a sense of this height. So let's see here. I'm going to bring in my Jagan B type. And then just Night Prowler. <laughs> yeah, now, he, now he's just tall. He kind of looks like the centipede from like the actual game. Centipede, not just how long he is now. But after we do that, we want to bring our legs forward. You can actually disconnect the legs from here if you really wanted to. Looks like the next step is to rotate the legs, it says. No, because you can't really. Oh, here we go. We want to rotate. Let me get, try to get this on camera. We want to rotate this piece so the legs are facing this way. I'm going to bring in these claw-like protrusions on the feet. So bring those in. We want to close it together by the looks of it. Yep, they have a tab. Now he's just kind of limp. So we want to tab this in. There we go. So tab that in. And we are slowly but surely getting there. Okay, hold on. It looks like this might open up some leg movement. Because, oh, there we go. Because now it wants us to rotate the legs this way. I wish it did. It had us do this before we connected the feet. Because that one tiny peg isn't really holding it. Alright. Next, it looks like we want to bring the body down. I don't think that's right. Can't be bringing the body down because I just... Okay, so you want to bring the body down somewhat. So, something like this. So now he's kind of sitting with his arm legs kind of sprawled out. Bring the feet downward. Looks like these might connect into something at the end. Looks like we want to bring, we want us to rotate the legs back again. Just bring that in. Looks like then the instructions, these are kind of facing more of this way. And this tiny peg here is not doing it for me. Yeesh, okay. Okay, bring the legs in like that. So now it looks like we want to bring this up, maybe? Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it wants us to bring this up. So let's see, can I bring this, maybe I need to bring this down a bit. Plug that kind of in. Huh. <laughs> this is very weird. Okay, I'm going to pause it real quick and see if I can figure out what I'm doing. Because, yeah, this rear piece is untabbing a lot. <laughs> I will be back in a couple seconds. Huh. Alright, so we are once again back on track. So there's like a peg back here to bend the legs a certain way. They actually get the peg back here to fit. And then the two little pegs that are on the arms are where those parts of the legs come in. So now he's, <laughs> now he just kind of looks like he's like that, just trying to come after you. Now he's just going to slowly come up and grab you with his multiple arms. But now that we have that in line, we can, it looks like we can move. I think we need to move these leg pieces up because I don't think those should be down. And they're probably going to help cover up some of the front a little we want to bring these legs 
into position. Then we want to do the same thing for the lower legs. Bring out our back wings. And now we want to grab the butt gun here. And we want to plug that into the peg right here. And that is going to fill up the rest. And that is going to give us our wasp singer. And with that, that is his transformation. I want to apologize real quick for the pauses I had to take during it. Because, yeah, he's... When it got to this rear part, I think that's when it really got kind of intricate. But, overall... I mean, after a couple times, I might be able to get it by memory. But enough of the partially grueling transformation process. And we're going to take a look at the wasp form. And here he is, finally completed. Waspinator in his iconic wasp form. Because if he wasn't a wasp, why would we call him Waspinator? <laughs> so, taking a look at the figure... Most of the outer detailing is very nice. You still have the moving head antennas here. You got some moving mandibles in the front. Those can kind of open and close to your bidding. Kind of look better closed. They might be meant to be closed, but the option is there in case you want to give them a kind of opening movement, maybe while he's talking in wasp form. Legs have the same movement you might be able to do something with these like you can kind of have eh, well that's nice it's kind of falling so you might be able to get something with the front ones but the back ones since they are both attached you might have to keep them together the wings <laughs> even in this form look well actually especially in this form look very nice and you can really put a lot of the range of movement to work so now you can have a kind of convincing flying motion going on here. The back is very cool. The gun piece blends in very well with the rest of the figure. The only issue I have really with the look is kind of the front. How these parts like come out right here with the feet. And you can see a lot of the Eternals in them. I wish there was some sort of panel or something they could have worked in to kind of cover it. But other than that, I mean, I would say, say he is a pretty decent figure. This is a very nice wasp mode. Very, you know, like I said, very waspinator to be a wasp. And put him next to some other Transformers real quick. Actually, some other figures. Here he is next to DK Guard, I think was his name. It's weird because he doesn't have an actual name. Like, it's like, I'm just going to call him Guard for the sake of everything. And next to Core Class Shockwave for Bumblebee, who I have in a cannon form instead of the tank form. So, yeah, interesting there. <laughs> Alright, here he is next to the Jagan B-Type again, standing up. And here he is next to a Master Grade Kit. Uh, the Zaku Cannon, who we always see a lot of in these reviews when it comes to the size comparisons. Move them out of the way. But yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, Wasp Mode is pretty good. I mean, I think it, it makes a pretty decent Wasp Mode. I mean, it is pretty good for what they could work with it. Since they probably do expect you to have him standing like this most of the time. You probably won't see a lot of his bottom kibble, but... You can see it in the front with the feet and the sides, which is definitely, I feel like, a concern there. But it's not the worst thing. They did get the engineering as good as they can, and I cannot fault them for taking uh, just some light nitpicks on my part right there. But yeah, very nice uh, wasp mode. And yeah, I mean, if personally, I don't like wasp like as, as, as an actual like animal, but... I think for this, Wasp Anita's Wasp Mode is, you know, definitely pretty cool. So moving on to some size comparisons. Here he is next to a Pipes from the Kingdom line and my previous review. The Legacy Night Prowler. Here he is once again next to 
guard in his vehicle mode and the bumblebee shockwave. And finally, the Jagan B type and the Master Grade Zaku Cannon. So overall, I would say the Waspinator figure is definitely a decently well figure. Kind of clunky with the extra legs for his loss mode that protrude from his arms and legs, but overall he is still pretty nice aesthetically, and his loss mode is also pretty nice. The wings are a nice aesthetic for the figure with the semi-clear purple that they have, and a lot of the purple accents in general are just like very nice, they stand out. And the same can honestly be said for the black and yellow stripes that line his body. Articulation is kind of average again because of the extra legs, but you still can get him in some neat poses. The transformation was alright, there was definitely some complicated parts, but I think once maybe you transform him a couple times, you might you might and you know get like you know some one of those things like if once you do it a couple times you'll remember like those specific parts that you need to watch out for and accessory count is low you only get the the, the butt the butt gun <laughs> the wasp stinger gun so yeah it's i mean is i mean i don't think you really use anything else but a blaster if i'm not mistaken but yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, the blaster, you know, works for him. I definitely don't see him being a character who wields like, a sword or anything crazy like that. But, yeah, I mean, this guy is still available on shelves in stores. And, well, they might be kind of clearing out now because stores, at least the stores near me, are finally getting in a lot of the legacy figures. So, definitely, it is something you want to pick up. I mean, I would definitely recommend him. I mean, if maybe you're not a Beast Wars fan, or you're just not a fan of the character, you know, definitely avoid him. But if you do like Waspinator, you know, for one thing, if, you know, maybe you introduce him in Animated, and this is kind of the closest thing we have to a recent Waspinator toy. So if you do like the character, or you're trying to build a Beast Wars collection, this is definitely a figure that I would recommend picking up. Again, I mean, it is kind of the latest Waspinator we have, and kind of the only one, really. Because if I'm not mistaken, the only other Waspinator I can really think of that's based off Beast Wars, that is, like, this design, is the old IDW version when they came with the comic books. That, that, was, such a, that was such a cool thing back then when figures, the figures came with the comic books. Mando Combiner Wars did it, but when IDW did it, it was just felt like a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, because they, they had some unique designs as well, but I didn't get Waspinator then. But I finally decided to pick him up now, mainly because I didn't really know that much about the character. But enough of personal experience. Waspinator, cool figure. If you want him, or you think he looks neat from this review, definitely pick him up while you can. I don't know if he's a figure who's going to spike up in price, but I think anything that, you know, ends up becoming retired eventually will kind of jump up in a price. So, definitely get him while he's, well, probably 25 now, ever since they raised the Transformers prices. It's just one of the worst things. But, yep, very nice figure. And, yeah, just, you know, buy him. <laughs> buy him if you, if, if you want him. I'm not saying you have to, but... If you, if you like this figure. And with that, this is going to be the end of this review. Remember to like and subscribe. And maybe comment as well. Com if there's anything I want anyone to comment on, just tell me what you think of the transformation segment. I really want to know if I should even keep that in the video. Because I'm starting to wonder if it makes the reviews way too long or it's just unnecessary. In a way, like, like I feel like what the way I do it, like everybody else would probably do it like way much better, or way better, way much better. I don't think it's a sentence, but yeah, I mean, it's probably the one thing I would kind of want to know feedback on, just to see. 
I mean, if it if people do like it, if people do find it helpful, I can keep doing them, but the transformation part at least. But if it is a segment that, you know, can you think can be skipped, let me let me know. Definitely would be helpful. And with that, this has been Red Scar Fox with my review on the Kingdom Waspinator. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Later.